Good morning. morning. Welcome to God's house. We rejoice today to hear about the Lamb, the Lamb who comes to take away the sins of the world. Uh, And you'll notice at the end of the service, there will be a plate at the back. Pastor Merle Monken, who served as vacancy pastor uh, since about May, uh, we'd like to gather an offering to thank him. So if you'd like to contribute to uh, a thank offering to him, there'll be a plate at the back of the church. Also, this afternoon is our installation. Yes, I'll be installed as pastor, but also pastor and congregation will be giving responses, giving commitments before God to one another. So I invite you to come for that. And I heard there's a bake-off, some sort of festival of cookies and bars and such after that so come for the service and then uh don't be too judgmental just enjoy the the treats afterwards that service will be at 1 30 this afternoon in our service today we'll hear several hymns uh, that may be familiar one that may be a little bit newer one is called the lamb and that was written by uh Uh, Pastor Gerald Coleman, and he wrote it. If you look at the bottom of him, sometimes you'll see the author and also maybe a dedication. And he dedicated it to a pastor, Reverend Frank Winter, uh, who was in Norfolk, Nebraska. Well, his son was there. But when we think about the sheep, we think about lamb, we think about God coming to be with us, his people. We rejoice today, and we begin with our first hymn, uh, the first hymn is Lamb of God. can be found in, uh, on the screens, I believe. This will be a great thing. And uh, I invite you to please stand. Be 
called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We pause for a moment to consider our week, our lives, and to privately confess any sins that are on our hearts to God, and then we will confess together in the general confession. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. Good morning again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Wasn't that the best? Yeah. You have to explain to this congregation that that means saying God's peace be with you. They don't know that. Okay. Okay. We'll get there. By the way, I knew Pastor Winter. He he was the pastor of St. Paul's Church in West Point. In West Point. Yep. There you go. Good morning. God's peace. God's peace. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings.
The Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, is Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, you coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, she named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me and made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you a light for the nations, and my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, To one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servants of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sothenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sacrificed in Christ Jesus, sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia and the reading of the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to Thee, O Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, for, but for the, this purpose I was baptized with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. 
The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. If everybody wants to have a seat right around there, that'd be great. Anybody that was here last week, do you remember the sign language I taught you? Give it a shot. What was it? Baptism? Do you remember what it was? You take a W, put it on your chin, and sprinkle on your head. Today we hear about the Lamb of God. Well, behold the Lamb of God. So if we look, that's kind of the thing. It's like, look over here. Look at this. So these are your two eyes. One here, one there. It's hard to make them wink, but you know, they, they work pretty good as eyes. So eyes can look all over the place. So behold the Lamb. So this is scissors. Now, here, now in 2023, we use shears, and it's different than using scissors, but the sign for sheep is going up your arm like you're clipping off the wool. Can you do that with me? Do scissors up on your arm like that? Like you're taking the wool off of a lamb? That's the, lamb, the sign for lamb. Behold the lamb of God. Now, flat hand like this, put it up in the air, and then bring it down. That's a sign for God. Behold the Lamb of God. Why are we learning that? Go for it. So we know some sign language. That's a good thing. Why else? Were you listening? Did you hear what the gospel talked about today? What was it saying? What did a man named John, which is John the Baptist, what did John say? John was the one that was getting us ready for Jesus. He wore some weird clothes and was standing out in the desert and people were coming out to say that they were sorry for their sins. But now the man was coming. Who is the Lamb of God? Jesus. Jesus which is actually a very easy answer in church, and it's very much the right one today. Jesus is the Lamb of God. In our first hymn today, we were talking about Jesus is the Lamb of God. Uh-oh, you're going to need another sign. So Jesus, if you take your two hands, bend your, finger, your middle fingers in and touch your hand where the nail marks are, you've signed Jesus. So Jesus is the Lamb of God. Of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God. This is a big thing, thing to think about because when we think of Jesus being a Lamb, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to a lot of people, not just young people. But we have to remember way back in the Old Testament when somebody sinned, they had to sacrifice. They had to sacrifice or kill an animal and then that animal's blood would save the people. Now John is making a big deal because the Lamb of God 
is coming to take away the sins of the whole world. It's not like a, a, a sheep or a lamb that we might have seen out in a field or maybe we even have one, but this is the Lamb of God. You'll hear more about that in the sermon today, but please copy what I say in a prayer and we'll uh, end that way. Dear Jesus, you are the Lamb. We thank you for your love. We see you the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, head on back, and everybody, we'll stand and confess together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the sermon hymn. We will sing the Lamb. And if you'd like to have uh, the, tech, the words and the, and the music in front of you, it's on page 547. <laughs> His will on our behalf the law to fill. For 
Worthy is the Lamb whose death makes me his own. The Lamb is reigning on his throne. He sighs, he dies, he takes my sin and wretchedness. He lives, forgives, He gives me His own righteousness. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christmas is sometimes referred to as the most wonderful time of the year. Then we move from there into the epiphany, which epiphany means manifestation or maybe just showing up or we could say the term revealed. My suggestion, if we put Christmas and Epiphany together, today could be Behold Sunday. We could look at various places where Scripture records the word Behold. Like we were saying with the children just a moment ago, look, look, there's something, there's something for us to see. Behold, and the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Behold, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Behold, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream to rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Behold is not necessarily a word we use on a, on a regular basis. It would probably sound kind of silly if we use that word, people would think, oh, he kind of talks like the Bible does. But if you think about it, how impressive to have a word that tells us to look. Don't miss it. I will introduce you over time to probably most of my family members because there's things that happen in your life, there's things that happen in my life that just help me to understand things like this passage a little bit better. I have three siblings, so four children in a four-door car. Later, we were in a station wagon. But on a trip, my mother was the, the, the queen, was the one who could figure out ways to keep four children 14 years apart from oldest to youngest to keep us from making our dad crazy. The goal was, was to maintain some sort of peace, some sort of attention, so that while we were in the back and bored and maybe we were traveling the four hours to Detroit to see an aunt or an uncle, my mom knew. And maybe it's the same way when God knew that the people were distracted and they were busy doing all those things that make our lives. And he said, behold, let me get your attention. For us, it was, kids, look. 
And mom would have seen something that when she took her head up from the book that she was reading, she would find something that would be intriguing to us. It might be an animal, or it might be a landmark, or maybe it was even, we're there. We have arrived at our aunt's house. A long, a long trip like that is sometimes very challenging. And the journey of God's people has been challenging because now, now the Messiah has come for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the Messiah, the one that everybody's been waiting for. Look, look, he's here. Maybe it was a parent or a teacher or a spouse who said, look, so you don't miss that moment. When I was in college, uh, Dr. Paul Felber took us on choir tours. We were in the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. We had gotten permission, I think, to sing. So we're standing in the front of this magnificent cathedral. And my girlfriend at that time knew that I was probably distracted. I was probably looking all over the place and not really thinking about it. She said, look, we're in a most incredible place. Take it in. And that's where John, who was receiving people at the river, was receiving people that came to repent of their sins. The next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We're different people in 2023. We probably have some knowledge of the Old Testament, but people in that day were very, very familiar with the Old Testament. They were aware because they were anticipating what the prophet said coming true. So John was getting their attention by saying, behold, because he was actually going back to a time when God delivered his people. Remember the Exodus? Remember around Easter time when they broadcast the Ten Commandments film again? I think it took as long to produce that film and to watch it as the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. It's just long. But it's the story of redemption, the story of saving God's people. From Exodus chapter 12. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, Every man shall take a lamb, according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. The people remembered that because every year during Passover, when they would remember the Passover, when they would remember the flight and leaving of, of Egypt to go into the promised land, they knew, they knew the lamb. They knew that lamb's blood on the doorpost meant that the angel of death would pass over them. But now, now no longer lamb after lamb, year after year, no longer going with the priest into the temple to sacrifice a lamb. This is the real one. This is the one who comes to take away the sins of the world. Behold, behold this. There is excitement in the voice of John. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. This is the Son of God. Even John, for all that he knew, had to have that moment when he realized that this man in the water that he was baptizing was the Messiah. Behold, behold, Jesus has come. As soon as we finish this first passage from the Gospel of John, we hear about the calling of disciples. We hear about us. We hear about that invitation to come and follow him. First, we behold the Lamb, it was at our baptism when the Holy Spirit came to us by water and word and brought faith to us. We became part of the family of God. We became one of his sheep. So just so you remember that, let's sign sheep again. Sheep. We are his sheep. He takes care of us. He loves us 
as the only good shepherd. I'll also tell you stories about myself, which includes the time I was to present on the word of, for Christ called the Good Shepherd. As I was giving my presentation, we knew what, what, what it meant when the professor would get behind us and start writing notes on the board. We weren't doing so well. This is chalk. I could hear as I was giving my presentation. I thought I knew what I was doing. I heard the chalk. The chalk on the board. Dr. Norman Nagel was from Australia and had this thick, thick accent. Dr. Nagel wrote on the board and I started to sweat because I was talking about who the shepherds were that were taking care of sheep. And I was trying to get around to the point and took a little long to get there. But then as I was facing my classmates, as I was talking about the only good shepherd the only pure and spotless lamb that can take away the sin of the world is Jesus. From behind me, I heard, oh, right, right. That's it. That's the point. In something that sounds incredibly bizarre to refer to Jesus as the lamb, that's the right part. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's where it happens. God is faithful. He comes to us in his word to remind us today, behold, don't miss it. This is the day. I love the fact that one of the, it's called a host box where you put the bread for, the, for, the, for communion. It has a lamb on it. Huh. Isn't that something? The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It, it's there. It's there for us to see. It's there for us to remember. And to remember often. And maybe because we're all in this journey together, sometimes we have to tap one another and say, Behold, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. By the time we get to Sunday, we've come with our weeks on our back. We come remembering the sins we've committed and we've confessed those. And behold, they're forgiven. We come here to be refreshed by his word, knowing again and hearing these words from St. John that tell us the Lamb of God has come to take away the sins of the world, and we anticipate when he'll come back again. And so I invite you, I invite you to come with me. Come with me on this journey as we watch the Lamb of God journey as he teaches and eventually goes to the cross, but also we this afternoon We'll commit to one another before God himself that we're going to work together. We're going to work to serve the Lamb of God. We're not here to be sacrificed in his stead, but instead he gives us this incredible opportunity to do ministry. To hear our stories and to then remind one another, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The God who rights all of our wrongs. Please join me. Join me this afternoon in a fresh start, a fresh opportunity to pledge anew to our God that we've beheld and now we want to be sent to share our experiences and anticipate. Anticipate not only his coming again in glory on the last day, but to live in hope. Hope is what you have because you can't see it. I don't have anything like a pastor's crystal ball or, or a book that reveals all the answers. Together, we'll investigate. And you'll tell me and I'll tell you, behold, look, look, this is something we can do to bring ourselves together in his love and, and his mercy. To build trust, to build excitement, to be like John, talking about the past, yes, but also looking at the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and takes us to that next level, that next step, that next everything. As we do this, we commit ourselves to his care. We commit ourselves to his direction because it's his Lamb that has taken away the sin of the world. God grant us that for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. 
As we present our, as we collect and present our offerings, we will sing at the Lamb's High Feast, we sing stanzas one and two. Also, if during, once you've uh, put your offering in the envelope, if you're an officer, if you've been elected this year or this, this is past year, or are still serving a term, I invite you to come forward after you've put your offering in the envelope and meet me up here in the front. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Okay, if you could turn around and face this way and come across the front, that'd be great. Oh! Come on up, gentlemen. If you were installed before, come on up. So just go ahead and fill in across the front. That'd be great. Well, they're coming up. I'll tell you a quick story. So I was teaching a child with disabilities how to acolyte. And the most wonderful part of his being an acolyte was I said, all right, now turn around and bow. So he turned around. He looked at the congregation. He took a bow. And it was wonderful. So that's okay if you want to look the other way, but now we're going to look this way for just a minute. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. 
In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The Apostle Peter also writes in her, his first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each of you have been elected or appointed to serve in various uh, offices. You've been chosen to fill specific duties and positions of responsibility here at Zion Lutheran Church, Denison, Iowa. You are to work with the pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his instruction, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal, the worldly affairs of the congregation are pop properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. With what, while holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. Now I ask you, in the presence of God and this congregation, do you accept the office entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, members of the congregation, you had, have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have elected to serve as officers. Do you now, as the congregation, support them in their work to remember them in your prayers? and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified by his work, that it be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of Zion Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of all his people. I invite the congregation to stand as we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them, by your Holy Spirit, those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, that here and in all places, under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. 
We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom for, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Please go back to your seats, and we continue with the prayers of the church. O oh Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Answer us according to your promises and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you formed your son in the womb of your servant Mary to be a light for the nations. Preserve that light among your people. Gather us around your word and sacraments. Enlighten and strengthen us by your grace and grant that we might reflect your love. Lord, in your mercy. God of glory, the heavens declare your handiwork, and each day and night testify to your majesty. Bless all teachers and students at Zion Lutheran School, that in their exploration of the arts and sciences, they may see your creativity and glorify you. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have watched over the tribes of Jacob, providing them both daily bread and redemption in abundant measure. Watch over the homes of your people here at Zion and throughout Denison. Bless them all that they, may, that they need for their body and life and preserve them in the glad confidence that Christ is their strength and their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, your Son became the Lamb of God to take away the sins and infir infirmities by his death and resurrection. Remember all who are in need of your help and healing, especially those who seek your healing hand, Barbara, Dean, Jeff, Sherry, May, and Lois, for those mourning the loss of loved ones, especially the family of Norma Henningsen and Denise Schlechta, Schlechta. Deliver them according to your merciful will and preserve them in the certainty that their sins are taken away. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would behold your people here at Zion, especially Dean, Mark, David, Taylor, and Kat. Grant that we who have celebrated the incarnation the birth of our Lord, Jesus Christ, may die to sin and rise to new life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our hearts the Christ announced by your forerunner. We commit our pastors and the people and all we do to your most holy and blessed guidance, your forgiveness and your strength. Be present, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this afternoon as Pastor Reedy is installed and we begin a fresh and vibrant time of ministry together through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a word about uh, distribution before distribution, um, before uh, the words of institution. I will, con I will commune everybody with the host, with the bread starting on this side. If you wish to receive gluten-free, let me know when uh, you're up here. And then the ushers or the elders will commune with the cup. And then I'll dismiss each table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. body of Christ, the body of Christ.